Back in the old days, one of my jobs, because I didn't sing too well or do much else too well, was to get pretty drunk and run around crazy and fall backwards into the drum set and rip my pants and stuff like that. I was pretty good at that stuff. Work. Summertime Blues was a popular, popular number that involved breaking microphone stands and things like that. We figured this time I'd have to do it with a walker, so we're not playing it. But one of the features of Johnny B. Good intro was always that I would have to get up and talk for a long time because we didn't have enough songs and that was one way to stretch it out. And generally people would, as I'm sure you were going to pretty soon, start yelling, play some music and things like that. But, to, but tonight we want to you know, present a small history of the band. And, it kind of all started out back in Buffalo, New York with, I remember one Thanksgiving when Steve Basil was home from college, he came downstairs with a nylon string classical guitar and I didn't know he was playing guitar. He said, hey, listen, listen to this. And he, well, give a little demonstration of what that sounded like, Mr. Fittis. No, actually, it didn't sound anything like that at all. It sounded more like And he said, real excited, what's that? And I said, I better come up with this. I better think of what he's trying to play here. And he said, it's, hey, Joe. Well, on a, on a nylon string classic guitar, of course, killing. It didn't sound much like Hendrix at that point. But, but he went, when Steve went off to college, he met Ace and Pepper, and Jim went off to college and met Andy, and sooner or later everybody had Don and Red and so forth. And when everybody graduated, since nobody really wanted to get a job, and killing Hidden, Maybe we'll do it in the summertime, please. Yeah. So it, it, you know, around about 1971, when I graduated from school, and getting a job seemed to be a bad idea, and nobody really wanted to go kill Vietnamese people, and stuff was, uh, it seemed like a good idea to maybe try to be a rock and roll band. And, uh, Steve had been playing guitar, and Jim had kind of been playing bass, and Andy had been playing drums on a hassock and a scrabble box, and it sounded not too bad at the time. So we started looking around, and, and we found ourselves a house in Gill, not too far from here. A real fixer-upper. People were moving to Alaska, their contractor had been an alcoholic, and they figured rather than fix up what he'd done for them, they'd just move to Alaska. They left us with a cat and a dog and a few other things like that. And we just kind of decided we were going to be a rock and roll band. And fortunately for us, and, and for a while, we were kind of a successful lousy rock and roll band. And that is a couple ways to tell the story. You know, we could say, you know, we worked a lot, nobody had a day job. But we were kind of in the right place at the right time, because uh, nobody knew what they were doing. But fortunately, at that point, Boston had gotten jacked up so high that a lot of really crazy people kind of rolled out to the Connecticut Valley and got stuck there. And there was a big audience for uh, enthusiastic, not know what you're doing kind of music. And the drinking age went to 18 in 1972. So never before had there been such an opportunity for people with a really low level of talent and a high level of, of enthusiasm to play to a big group of people with a low level of taste and a high level of intoxication. And it, and it worked out. So, uh, oh, now the band is playing, saying, why don't you play some music? All right, I'll shut up now. And, you know, even though we're getting a little older and you're looking at 
things like, uh, you know, how did you get from the point to where you were waiting for your parents to go out so you could smoke a joint, and now you're waiting for the kids to go out to smoke a joint. <laughs> things are slowing down, but you still got rock and roll. Thank you.